All right, a Fox News exclusive, Melania Trump is setting the record straight ahead of the release of our new memoir called Melania. She gives us an inside look at her personal life from her relationship with the former president to the devastating loss of her mother earlier this year. We were able to sit down with the former first lady for this exclusive sneak, sneak peek before her new book hits shelves next month. Take a look. You said in the book, you said sometimes in order to succeed, you must be willing to take risks. How did the risks early on as a model prepare you for life as the first lady? I think nothing prepared me more to be first lady in front of the world than the fashion industry. The fashion industry, it's glamorous, but it's at the same time very tough. Mm. And uh, as everybody judges you, look at you a certain way, so it's, uh, it can be mean world as well. So nothing prepared me more for, for this world than fashion. It gives you a thick skin. So it was August 27th, 1996, and you had this modeling contract. You have two suitcases, a carry-on, and a passport. That is all you brought with you to America. And my portfolio. And your portfolio. That was so very important. Absolutely. Yes. You, need, you need to find a job. So ten, and you hit the ground running. You didn't even go to your apartment. You immediately went to work. Tell Correct. Us, tell us about that. Well, when I arrived to New York City, I still remember it was Tuesday afternoon early afternoon, I went directly from the airport to the agency. So I start um, right away. You sign the contract, you, uh, they copy your portfolio, and you start. So it was an exciting time. So 10 years later, after arriving here, you find yourself raising your right hand and reciting the Pledge of Allegiance and becoming an American citizen. You had no idea at that moment you would go on to become the first lady of the United States of America. What did that day, becoming a citizen, mean to you? I was very proud. I went through the process, and that day was a big celebration. I was very, very proud. So meeting Donald Trump, how did you meet him? We met at the party, and you could read a whole chapter in the book. Yes, you are at the Kit Kat Club, and yes. there was that moment of connection. And then you refused to give him your number, and you asked for his number, and you went on a modeling shoot in the Caribbean. And while you're down there, you couldn't stop thinking about him. And so you came home, and you called him. What happened? We went to the on the first date, if you could call it a date. <laughs> Because it was mixed with professionalism, too. Correct. Right? And I completely understand now that I know him more. Yes. That was so, it was so him. And I liked in one way about it because I, you know, I was the same and I love uh, the vision that he had and the connection that we had. So it was very special. You get in the car and he drives you to Bedford, Bedford and outside of the city, what, an hour outside of the city, and he wanted to show you a business or some property that he had. Mm -hmm. So he was combining business with taking you on a first date. <laughs> and it was very nice because we were, two of us, alone in the car for hour, hour and a half, and it's no other noise, no other people, because at that time he was already known and a celebrity, so it was really nice to be just two of us. Yes. Did you fall in love then? It was a connection. Mm -hmm. It was a connection. Mm -hmm. You said our chemistry was undeniable. Our connection felt natural. In private, he, re he revealed himself as a gentleman, displaying tenderness and thoughtfulness. Did he ever say to you in those early stages or even in that first car ride, I'm going to be president one day? No, we didn't discuss no. that time. Not did he tell you but eventually? Soon, did you know? But politics? soon later. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, okay. Yes, soon later. So the, not that he would be the president, but he always uh, was involved in politics. He was very um, in tune what's going on in the world, and especially in this country. Six years into the relationship, it's April of 2004, and he proposes to you. Well, it was first of all, it was my birthday as well, and it was a Met Gala. So it was all in one. We were all ready at home, all, both of us in black tie. So 
he proposed that time. Describe your wedding day. It was January 22nd, 2005. It was almost a year after you were engaged and you got married at Bethesda by the Sea, beautiful church down in Palm Beach, and then the reception at Mar-a-Lago. What was that day like for you and your family and your mom? It was an exciting day. Um, a busy, busy day. As every bride, you want to make sure everything goes smoothly. Mm -hmm. And it went. We had, a, we had a good day. I'm sure. There was a touching story in the book about the baptism candle. Your mom brought this over from Slovenia. It was the candle that was lit in the church when you were baptized. You lit it at your wedding, and then you lit it again when Baron was baptized. And you still have it, I assume. I still have it. Interesting, I was baptized on Donald's birthday. Really? June 14. Wow. The dates yeah. connect. Yes. So um, my mother, she thought about it, and she brought it here That's to the United sweet. States. And you say in the book about becoming a mother, you said, I stepped back from public life, no longer one of the glamorous photo shoots and the jet-setting lifestyle, and my career took a back seat. Was that a hard change for you? It was not. No. Why? Because I had a different purpose in life. Best day of your life when they put the baby in your arms? Something changes. Yes. Yeah, something changes. There's a picture in the book, and you're working at the desk, and you have Baron in one of those small little motorized cars. Books, his books, his children's books are all over the floor. You have your papers all over your, the desk. And I looked at that picture and I said, this is a working mom's life. We can all relate to this. Everything's chaotic, everything's hectic, but it's so much fun. And everyone tells us to enjoy those moments because they're fleeting and your kids grow up and it just flies by. When you look at that picture, what was happening in that moment? When I see it, that was the, the time that I did um, QVC collection, my jewelry Which and sold out pieces. in 45 minutes. It did, yes, <laughs> was very successful. So I was doing all at the same time, uh, working, playing with Baron. He has his uh, own time with you know, his car and his books, and we talking. So I think it's very important that we show our children that we are working too, mm -hmm. uh, to give them an example how life is, that they see us, that we are productive, that we have an ideas, that ideas comes to life. And uh, that's how I was showing to Baron. And did you and Donald Trump, did you ever talk about having more children? Did you want a larger family? I was always um, perfectly fine with one. Mm -hmm. And uh, Donald was enc encouraging to have more. And I said, like, I'm, I'm completely fine with one because uh, it's very busy life. And I know how busy he is, and I'm in charge of everything. So that's why it's, uh, it's, it's just perfect. So Donald was on Brian Kilmeade's show last weekend, and Brian was asking him about your relationship, and he said, you know, Brian, she really, really does love me. So what do you love most about your husband? He's, he's being. He's, humor, his personality, his kindness. He's, he's very special. Uh, his positivity, um, his energy, it's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, so we have a beautiful relationship. We see these clips of Donald Trump giving a lady at the, ca at the cash register $100 to pay for her groceries. The little boy with a rare disease, he invites him to the rally in New York, and the little boy cries when he receives a letter on his birthday from Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump called all of, he calls all the service members, their family members, when they lose their lives. Th these are stories that a lot of people, you don't get to see this on other networks. Is that the man he is? That's the man he is, yes. One word to describe him, what would that be? One or two words? Uh, caring, caring especially for this country. And what do the two of you like to do for fun if you're not working? To have a dinner, sometimes quiet dinner or dinner with friends and listen to the music, mm -hmm. all kind of different musics. I hear he likes to be the DJ. He likes to be the DJ, and um, it's very uh, fun night when he does that.
When you marry Donald Trump, he already had four children, and you talk about that in the book, and it would seem so fun to have just so much life and children around you. You said, I gave everyone their own space, grounded in love and respect. You didn't always agree, but acknowledged differing viewpoints. So what advice do you have for blended families? To take individual as they are, you cannot control anyone. You could control only your own behavior, your own words. Everybody is control, in control of own self. I'm not in control of my husband. I'm not in control of his children. I'm not even in control of my child. Mm -hmm. He's his own person. And we all have yes and no's, and we are all individuals. Once you, you lead your life with respect, and love, that's all what it matters. Baron now, he's so handsome, and we've enjoyed watching him grow up. I'm very proud of you for keeping his life private. I think that's important. Um, Baron's now in college. What was that like for you? What's advice? What advice can you give all of us who are a little nervous about that day, because we just love our children so much? What's it like being an empty nester? I could not say I'm an empty nester. I don't feel that way. Mm -hmm. I. I raised Baron as a own person and gave him his own yes and no's. I respect that. Uh, it was his decision to come here that he wants to be in New York and study in New York and live in his home, and I respect that. And he's um, he's an incredible young man. I'm very proud of what he grow up to, his strength, his intelligence, his knowledge, his kindness, it's admirable. And um, he's enjoying his college days. I hope he will have a great experience because his life is very different than any other 18, 19 year old child. I was moved to tears in your book when I read about the loss of your mother. And you said this about her loss. There is an unparalleled sorrow in losing a mother, a profound heartache that shatters the spirit into fragments. For me, this heartache feels insurmountable, and the weight of grief is overwhelming. Um, it does feel insurmountable sometimes, and um, let me be strong, but how do we, what advice do you have? Because I remember when my mom lost my grandmother, it was devastating, and it really separated her from God for a while. She came back to God. Um, she just had a lot of questions because she felt like he took someone that was so special to her away from all of us. But it made my, my faith stronger. But what advice do you have for people that are going through this to lose a parent? Well, it's a very um, a moment that nobody prepares you. and. Um, it's a grief that comes in waves, mm -hmm. and you need to feel it. You need to have that inner peace that to go with it, to feel it, to experience it. And first of all, I want to thank all of the people around the world who send a beautiful letters, beautiful prayers, uh, very kind notes. Uh, thank you to everybody who, uh, who wrote me, who thought about me and my family, and was really deeply appreciated. Yes, and I know she, she lives on in Barron. Um, I remember at, at her funeral, Donald Trump talked about how your mom would cook for him, and that's probably why Barron is so tall. She was a very special woman, full of warmth, kindness, and also strength. Her life was uh, incredible in Slovenia. She established a life for myself and for my sister. Um, in incredible life, uh, also my father. But her strength was admirable. And once Baron was born, he, he was her focus. She moved here to the United States to be close to him and uh, to, to raise him in one way. It's almost like she was a second mother, especially because of my schedule in the White House and 
uh, being so busy. So, and they had an incredible bond. Mm -hmm. Her and Baron, it was a relationship like no other. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.